Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Walt Moore and I also go by the name Dan Wilson. And the first of all, I want to thank you subscribers jumped on the channel here just the last few days. We really appreciate that you guys. And today we're back to some more home improvement video for you guys. And we're in the process of renovating the old house over here. And um, for today we're going to be doing some uh, basic electrical work on the house here. So for the time being we're just going to go over some basic electrical stuff here with you guys. Not a bunch of technical stuff. So discussing neutrons, protons, electrons, stuff like that. We'll save that for another day. But for the time being, as part of our process, we're uh, gradually changing out these old two-prong receptacles. If you guys can see one of these old ones here. Now these were all installed back in the early 1970s, and that's about all we had available at that time period. Now the reason we're upgrading to these newer receptacles, as you can see here, most of our newer plugs have not only a hot, neutral conductor, but also a ground right there. You can see it ground okay. Now the issue we had um, in later years... All the newer cords are like this. What we got here is the old two prong. Guess what, guys? It won't plug in unless we have one of these. This is a two prong to three prong adapter. And I'll tell you guys honestly, I hate these things. I mean, in a situation where you have little options, no choice, temporarily, yeah, they'll work okay. You just plug this in here. And then you can plug your three prong cord in, you know, like this. Well, this one's a little tight, but anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. But anyway, the point being that this just adds another connection point and another possibility of failure. So I like to just weed these things out and get rid of them. So here in a little bit, we're going to be installing a new receptacle. I'll show you guys how we hook this stuff up. Okay, guys, here we are at one of the outlet boxes in the wall here. First thing we do is start pulling our wires out here and see what we got. Now guys, more than likely there's a hot conductor in here. We're going to check that out here in just a minute. It's a little messy in there. You guys can tell I've got some sheetrock patching to do here <laughs> sooner or later. One thing I want to show you guys too if you're new at this. A very important thing to have one of these testers like this. This is an inductive tester. This will indicate voltage without making actual physical contact to the wire. So you see, I got one here that has a wire nut on there. That's going to be a hot one, I'm sure. So what we're going to do here on this particular model, we have a little dial here on top. Other ones have a little push button deal. They're designed differently. This one just has a little dial here on top. I'm going to rotate that back just a little bit. Now, for high voltage, we want this on the lowest setting, which is barely on like that. For low voltage tests, we hit, take the dial here, turn this all the way up to the highest setting for different applications. For right now, that we want it down, just barely turned on like that. Now, guys, when this thing lights up and beeps, it's going to indicate a hot conductor. There it goes. So, next thing, guys, we got to find that circuit and get that circuit breaker off. Okay guys, I turned the circuit breaker off. As you can see now, my tester is not lighting up or beeping. So let's get to work on this new outlet in. And again, here is our new three-prong receptacle. Another thing I hate about these older style receptacles like this, you see there are no side terminal screws either side. These are back wire only, and I personally hate that. These things are notorious for coming loose, making very poor connections, and in some extreme cases leading up to an absolute house fire. These things are junk. This is going in the trash. Our newer receptacles here, we have side terminals, both sides, plus our ground. Now in this case, we don't have a ground wire, so we're going to have an open ground no matter what. We can't do anything about that. Now, another important thing too, guys, and again, just in case you don't know, this side over here has kind of a brass colored screw. That's our hot side. Over here is more of a silver type color. That's our neutral, neutral side. Down here, the green screw, of course, is always ground. So what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to take our wire. Now, a very important thing, too, we want to loop the wire in the direction that the screw is going to be tightening, which is going to be always clockwise. Okay, guys, what we're going to do here is take our hot side, give this one an up curl, curl that one up. You can see it, okay. 
like that. Our neutral side here, we're going to curve it downward because that's the direction the screw is going to go, like that. So the easy way to remember that, just take your hot side here. And again, we're going to strip a little more insulation off of that one right there. Good rule of thumb there as far as if you don't have a strip gauge. Most of these receptacles have a strip gauge. This one I can't really tell if it does or not. Some do, some don't. This one I don't think does. If you don't have a strip gauge of any kind on your receptacle or, or your tool or whatever, as a general rule of thumb, at least for a guy, your thumbnail is about three quarter of an inch. Well, I do it a lot of times, take my thumbnail kind of like that as just a general guide as far as how much insulation to strip back. And that's usually just about right. So you're going to take our hot side here on this one. Quick little up curl on that one, our neutral side over here. A little more insulation off of there. And we're going to curl that one downward, just like that. The next thing we want to do, guys, is get this hooked up correctly. Again, our hot side goes on here, on the brass-colored terminal screws. Our neutral side over here on the silver-colored. So anyway, we're going to take our hot side here, hook it around our screw just like that. Turn it around so you guys can see a little better. Most of these strippers have a little plier end on them. Take that and clench that wire just a little bit around that screw. Just like that. Bend it around. Bring the hot wire here. You can see we have two screw terminals right here. Which in most cases, that's all we need. We're going to have a line side and a load side to hook up. Slip that one over right there. Give that one a little bit of a clench. Just like that. Again, notice how I loop the wire in the direction the screw is tightening. We're just going to tighten, tighten, tighten. When tightening your terminal screws too, guys, just tighten to where that wire starts to curl around just a little bit farther. It's not going to do too much, but... And you just kind of feel it, just kind of, you know, just snug it down where it feels nice and tight. Good connections are everything. And we're going to tighten down our neutral terminals. again just till they feel nice and snug so we got our hot side hooked up here neutral side over on this side right here and all we have left to do is mount this up in the box and we'll be done well there you go guys I got the receptacle mounted up in the box there yeah I'm not planning on putting the cover on just yet till I get the sheetrock work done and of course we're going to repaint the room eventually <laughs> So the cover stays off for right now. So the next step is turn the breaker back on and see if it holds. Okay guys, here we are at the old circuit breaker panel. This breaker right here is a circuit we've been working on. Now, I'll tell you guys, at this point is what I call electrician judgment day. When I turn this breaker on and this thing snaps back to about the halfway point about like that it means it tripped and that means I screwed up so guys wish me the best here we go and the breaker held how about that for some nice work well guys the circuit breaker is back on it didn't trip <laughs> so nothing went wrong fortunately I'm going to show you guys real quick. Another neat little tester I got here is a plug-in type tester. This will test regular outlets as well as ground fault, or we sometimes refer to as GFCI receptacles. This little button on top right here is for testing ground fault receptacles. When I push this in, it simulates a ground fault, and that's to make sure the ground fault receptacle is tripping properly. And sooner or later, I'll show you guys installation of a GFCI receptacle. For right now, we're just getting this one wrapped up. So we're going to plug this in here. And normally, guys, we'll have two lights here on the end. These two kind of orange colored here usually come on when we have grounded wire. Unfortunately, this house does not have grounded wire. So we're going to be indicating open ground. But just make sure that we have a good hot receptacle here to plug her in. 
Hang, see our middle light? Middle light came on. So that means the receptacle is active. Anyway guys, receptacle install went quite well, which I've done thousands and thousands of times before. And by the way, if you guys have any questions about electrical stuff in general, just drop down in the comments there. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. If you try this on your own, again, be sure and turn off the circuit breaker or fuses if you still have fuses. <laughs> but one or the other, shut down the circuit before you try something like this. I want to thank you guys for checking out the video. Again, I'm Walt Morrison's Dan Wilson. Hope this helps you guys out at least a little bit. And again, if you're new here and have yet to subscribe, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Got more video stuff coming up. And be sure and smash that like button and share these videos with your friends. You guys take care and God bless. And I'll check in with you on the next video. Thanks for watching.